kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just reads a book. Well, we got to know what's in this book, so it's important. Okay. Why labels are not comparable to peels? <coughs> label peel. Do you have a relative named Label Peel? Uh, my great-grandfather, my grandfather's uh, Aaron Yaakov. Okay, so you get these little labels on a, on a, on a thing, right? On a khala, a little tiny thing. Yeah, Why right. is it not comparable to a peel? Peel is yeah. like, you know, an orange peel. Like an orange peel, yeah. What is or, it? you know... Uh, plastic, plastic <laughs> on it. Kind of not. Why is this label that's stuck to the bread Some not comparable to the other stuff? Sunflower. Uh, yes. Okay, think about that, and I'll tell you. As stated, labels are different from peels in that they may not be peeled off, even for immediate use. Labels? Yeah. You have to eat the label. No. No. You have to take it, peel, cut it right? off with a little bit of the challah, like the good. Oh. Right. And you don't yeah. even have to do that miyad. Those, all those fresh challahs, they have these little stickers on them. Right. You want to get rid of that. But if you take, if you cut it, you I blow the flavors of the challah. It, I always wonder why it tastes so weird, that, that <laughs> You eat them? It's not part of the challah, wow. Okay, the difference is that peels <laughs> cover the entire fruit, thereby denying access to the fruit. The peels may thereby be isolated and removed to gain access. Labels, however, only cover a small area of the food and are not, therefore, like any pasoilus meaning what you don't want, that clings to a food. Some postgames do not make this distinction and permit the removal of these labels because the label blocks access to the part of the food that it covers. So you got two opinions on that. Paul? Yeah. Just two opinions? Just two. <laughs> Here's a note. When cutting away the labels, care must be taken not to tear the lettering on the label. Cool. However, one may tear between letters even if a word is thereby broken. You ever have that happen to you? Cut right between a letter? I try to. Lucky. Sometimes there's letters everywhere. Yeah. I was once in Shua and I wanted a piece of licorice that was in a thing. And I couldn't, I didn't know how to open it without tearing letters, so I gave it to a really religious guy. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's how you do it. <laughs> you just so if you're religious, I guess you, you, you can do that. <laughs> no, I'm not getting this part. What? Why he do why, why, I, also I don't know why he did it. He just told you you can't, but he did it. No, he just, he wasn't, he didn't realize, he didn't know how so to do it. Like movie stars, you know, they have a license to commit crimes, but they can't be <laughs> yeah. thrown in jail. <laughs> no, what happened, probably what happened was he does not read English, so he thought they were not better. <laughs> that's a good point. All right. What about ink stamped labels? Ink labels stamped on oranges, grapefruits, melons may be cut away with part of the peel even when the fruit is desired for later use. Yeah, you don't have to. You could do it even a few hours before. No problem. Why would you want to cut away the, the peel, ink stamp you could, you could with the peel? You, a few hours? you want to take the whole peel off. No, that's right. You just want to take off the ink stamp because you, you don't want to say how much it costs. Sometimes it says $1.99 on it. You don't want oh, to, you want to take out the price. Yeah, you, <laughs> want, you don't want the host to know how much it costs. You, know, you don't want your wife to know. Oh, so okay, you so that's the reason to do it. You know how it is. All Husbands right. get very nervous when the wife sees the price. Okay. Or the opposite. <laughs> it's even worse. <clears throat> okay. This is good stuff, right? <clears throat> Removing bits of eggshell from a hard-boiled egg. Ever have that happen to you? Eggs that have eggshell. You got a hard-boiled egg, but it's peeled, obviously. But you got bits of eggshell on it all the time. So how do you get rid of that? Lick it. <laughs> <laughs> Some post game. Permit the removal of bits of eggshell left on a hard-boiled egg because the broken pieces of eggshell prevent access to the food. So preventing access to the food is a big thing. If it's in your way, you're allowed to, get to peel that an food, egg on Shabbos. You're allowed to peel an egg on Shabbos. Right, but you got bits on it, so you're like taking the bad right off the good. Uh -huh. mm. you see what I mean? What 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 if it's you doing it? But wrong, it's your, but since it's, it's blocking your access to the food, you could take it off. One may also rinse the egg under the faucet to remove the particles of eggshells. Okay. Got it? Do you have to take part of the, the egg with it or not? Just watch no. it. Apparently you can just do it. Because huh? they're just preventing you from eating the food. They're not uh, really, you know. Whatever. <laughs> Rinsing soiled fruits. Vegetables, lettuce. Kiddish, kiddish. 
Dirt or other undesirable matter clinging to fruits or vegetables is similar to peels and may be rinsed or wiped off just before eating but not earlier. Accordingly, one should rinse off sand from lettuce leaves only for immediate use. Similarly, lollipops, sucking candies, toffees that fell and became soiled may be rinsed off for immediate use. You, you don't have to take part of the candy with the dirt. Just rinse it off. Just rinse it off. Right. Starting to get a little complicated. Wiping fuzz from peaches. Any takers on that one? Writing what? Fuzz. You know, fuzz. you get peaches with a little fuzz on it. Maybe you don't like the fuzz. Oh, uh, there's white fuzz on peaches? Fuzz. There's fuzz. Do you see fuzz? You never seen okay. peach, peach yeah, fuzz. Yeah, it's, it's a famous peach fuzz. name. Peach Sometimes. fuzz. This guy? guy just started. <laughs> yeah, peach fuzz. He got a peach fuzz. <laughs> yeah. All right. What can you do with that? <laughs> can you shave it? <laughs> <laughs> natural. Okay, they call it natural downy-like matter, called fuzz. Found naturally on freshly picked peaches is similar to dirt or a peel and may be rubbed off, but only just before eating. You do everything just before eating. Basically, you're all right. You know. Similarly, a baked potato that was baked before washing may be rubbed clean of dirt, but only just prior to eating. Sweet potato has peels. Do you take it off? Uh, well. We just Potato. discussed that for the last half an hour. What do you think? Yes. How? Can you use a peeler? A cutting. No. Okay. You can do anything you want just before eating by hand and immediately. Okay? I mean, um, pardon me, and take the good from the bad. You know, if you're going to peel an orange, you... You peel it just before you eat. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Partially spoiled fruits, vegetables. Spoiled or brown mm -hmm. spots on apples, peaches, bananas, and similar fruits may be cut away. Provided that a small but significant amount of the unspoiled part of the fruit adjacent to the spoilage is removed together with it. Like a banana. You get that brown stuff. You, want, you don't want it. You got to take enough of the white stuff to be significant. Right. You gotta use that white stuff to remove the brown stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the usable part of the fruit that was cut away with the brown spot may be trimmed off later and eaten. You could get your white stuff back later. <laughs> but to get rid of the brown spot, you gotta get rid of some of the white yeah, but like spot. Like potatoes that have the brown spots? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I always hate the brown spot. We wanna take it off. Right. So you take some of the white spot off with it. Yeah. yeah. French fries, like French fries, they have like a, a moldy part. Right. There is no reason, halakhically or practically, why it should be thrown away. That's the good stuff that you took off with the bad. You could eat it later. That's the Shabbos? Yeah. Or, yeah, or, or, or you got you got this <laughs> little, you just cut off the Shabbos. good and eat it, you know? Yeah. Oh, you want it for yourself. But to get rid of the brown spot, you got to take some white spot. And then you can just take the white spot for yourself, because you're allowed to take good from the bad. <clears throat> right. Oh, that's it. You're a smart man. You got it. You found the trick. All right. All right. What about stems? Well, most fruits have some stems, right? Stem cell research. How do you get rid of those? What? Stems. Stem, stem cell research. Right. Stem cell research. <laughs> stems. You know stems? Just, just the little things that come out. The stems. The visual? Yeah, like, you know, the flower has yeah, little stems. Okay. Okay, the stems or of fruits or vegetables, apples, pears, plums, yeah, peaches, tomatoes, cherries may be removed off. for immediate use if they are clearly discernible from the body of the fruit. They don't look like anything like the fruit. There's just a little right. green thing coming out. Like so you can, you can take it off immediately organic, before eating. Organic tomatoes, you know? However, stems that are recessed and embedded in the fruit, like strawberries, may be considered a borer combination and should therefore be cut off together with a small part of the fruit. Another method is to hold the stem in one hand and put the, pull the fruit away from the stem, not to reverse. Doing so in this manner is permitted because it constitutes the removal of oichel metoch pasolus, the good from the bad. Got that? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. stem cells now. Okay. Grapes. Detaching them from the stem. 
You got, you know, those vine grapes, you get a ton of grapes on those stems thing. How do you do that? What's the right way? Any takers? You take good from the well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Grapes still attached to the stems are considered a borer combination. That is the perfect example of what borer is. And may be detached only just prior to eating. Only the desired grapes may be removed from the bunch. Those that are spoiled or inferior may not be removed. <clears throat> Soaking dusty grapes. A cluster of grapes that has, un has undesirable matter, dirt, leaf, and stem debris on them should not be soaked in a bowl of water for cleansing, even if they are to be eaten right away. This is because the soaking action constitutes the removal of the bad from the good. Don't soak them. Don't soak them. How are we doing? Um, Need another Radman break? We got... We got Six five minutes, minutes, so I'll just finish up and, mm -hmm. and you can take it out. Okay. Awesome. How are we doing here? Okay, we'll go up to there. Rinsing grapes. According to some post scheme, one may rinse a whole bunch under running water and cleanse it of unwanted matter in that manner. Rinsing is merely considered an act of washing, not sorting. According to this view, however, it is preferable where where not very difficult to rinse each individual grape separately for immediate use. That's preferable. Rinsing is not borer, but they prefer. Which means you could get away without. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you want to be exact, some guy mock Peter. Perfect. Fresh and spoiled fruits in the box or bin. In a box or bin. <coughs> Fresh and spoiled fruits mixed in a bin. May not be separated unless the three conditions of borer are present. What are those three conditions? We learned them at the beginning. Silas. Yeah, from right. what? How do you how do you word it? Silas. Oy, dash. Oyko. Oyko. Oyko mitoch pasolas. Right. Yeah. Take the good from right the bad. Away. Now, what are the other two things? Eating right away. Yeah, right Here's right your hand. Two hands. Two hands. Separating. Yeah. Separating. What's your hand? What what's what is it what's He's what are the two things? Gathering? Biyad, by hand and miyad yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah. And good from the yeah, bad. Yeah. Good from the bad. Okay. That's what it says here. You need three conditions. They must be removed by hand, which is biyad, uh, as is usually the case. Two, the unspoiled fruits must be removed from the bin, good from the bad. And three, they must be intended for immediate use, to be eaten right away. Miyad. If the fresh fruit is not eaten, needed immediately and is liable to become spoiled, if left together with the spoiled fruit, one may empty the entire bin or box, causing the contents to scatter and thereby become unmixed. The spoiled fruit may then be removed and the good ones replaced into the fresh ones be placed into the bin. Okay, that wraps it up for tonight. I turn you back to the great, the wonderful, because the only uh, radical <laughs> man in the world doing anything against the grain of normality. The wonder rad man himself. So back in the day, uh, the Jewish minutes. nation did what? not have uh, so much money to, uh, to survive. It was not so easy. Um, in, for the Jews of Jerusalem, there was very little infrastructure. Actually, Israel was a desert. There was nothing there. There was no farmland. The only way people made money was from camels and from like goats. Right. They used the skin for uh, their sails. That's it. There was nothing really there. They couldn't write a history book. There was a few uh, <laughs> minor uh, cities where you could grow stuff. So people were really, 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 really poor. And they decided to send uh, one of these rabbis um, or somebody to go collect money. So they, they made a, lo a lottery. And guess who got it? This guy named uh, Yaakov uh, uh, Elbaz. His last name was Elbaz. And his birthday was just now. So that's how I'm going to say the story. Um, and basically he goes down to the river, you know, but the water, uh, Yaffa port, that was the only place you could go, uh, shipping yards. And he, uh, tried to, he wanted to go to Constantinople. It's called Constantinople. Whatever that city. Constantinople. Constantinople. Okay. So he tried to get a boarding uh, ride on one of the ships, but nobody would uh, give him a ride. He's like, listen, uh, you know, I need to go collect. And this, they're all laughing at him. You don't pay, you don't go on. So he goes down to the river, uh, to the lake. Whatever the ocean, whatever it's called, the Mediterranean uh, Sea. He puts his carpet down, you know, to relax on the carpet, and he's just sitting there and meditating, just meditating, meditating on holy thoughts. And all of a sudden, uh, some wave came, picked him up, and he's just like floating on the water. The ship sees him 
floating on the water. So they, they beg him to get onto the ship. They're like, I'm sorry, Rabbi. Holy man, we're sorry that we didn't take you. The guy's floating on the water with a carpet. And he's like, no, if God wants me to float on the carpet, I'm going to float on the carpet. He flo <laughs> floated all the way to uh, Constantinople. Wow. And, and, and from then on, on, from then that day on, everybody called him Rabbi Yaakov Av Avuchatzera. Abu yeah. Qatar means the magic carpet. Magic. Wow. So, and then uh, eventually they made a movie called, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually they made a movie called Aladdin, <laughs> Aladdin. about this guy. <laughs> That's not the exact same story, but. Really? It stole it from him. Yeah, but a poor guy going to get money from the rich guys. Okay. Anyway, so everybody should have a beautiful week. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Robbie Rubin. He's making a fundraiser for his brother who has a hard eyesight. Everybody listen up. Give undivided attention to Rabbi Rubin. Rogershan. Anybody that wants to help finance. Shut down your computer by mistake. Oh, wow. it's okay. <laughs> Anybody that can help. <laughs> My brother's losing his eyesight. He's got six months to a year. He's not sure exactly. I'll find out more details. But I'm fundraising for him so he can get it all taken care of. Insurance won't pay for it at his age. They're saying, uh, let it uh, just go the way it is. And, uh, it's not right. Way our government runs. So, yeah, so he needs help on fundraising for him. And how do we give you money? You can face fundraise. I'm doing it on Facebook. What's the Facebook page? It's on, uh, on my name, Robert Rubin. You can see the fundraising for him. And uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. And uh, come and cheer, cheer, cheer. Share this post.